Good after midnight before midday, everyone. How are you? It's great to have you here. Uh, my name is Michael Rollins, um, and I'll be talking for two and a half hours while these guys here sit and listen to me. Um, we're going to be having a bit of a hangout about... How are you? <laughs> to have you here. Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, I'm hearing myself. Oh, uh, mute. Oh, God. I'm screwing it up already. Okay, sorry. Um, so Who's there uh, with you? Who's here with me? Yeah, I'm going to get to that. Sorry, my, my hangout started talking back to me, and then I was like, oh, God. Um, okay, so here with me today, a bunch of my very, very good friends. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves. I'll go down the line, starting with Mr. Tim. I had to unmute. Fuck. I had to unmute myself. <laughs> All right. Uh, hello. That's Tim. Uh, Mr. Bronx. What's up? Oh, I Mr. didn't know he was even there. He's here. He's here. All He's lurking. Mr. Shives. Hello. Mr. <coughs> Mr. <coughs> Mr. Coffin. Ha ha. Oh, ha ha ha. Thanks. Nice uh, one. I'm here all week. Um, <laughs> Miss Winters. Yes. Guten Abend, alles. Alle. I don't know. I forget. My German sucks. Yeah. Forget the thing. Yeah, make it as good. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Chrisiosity. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Um, Mrs. Ashley. Bienvenue. Yep. Uh, Ms. Anarchist from the Americas. Hello. Why are you censoring me, Michael, you feminist desk you cuck? I'm the worst. And then Mr. Dom. Hello. Hi. Great. So that's everyone. Uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, <laughs> should we be engaging with the other side? So we've, we've, we've been through a bit of interesting turmoil recently uh, in the community thing kind of going on with, uh, with a, a public figure by the name of Lacey Green, who's decided that she wants to open the discourse. She's going to be the arbiter of, uh, of public discourse between the, um, the anti-Jews and the, the, the pro-Jews. Um, and uh, we wanted to kind of have a discussion about how that kind of goes and how that works for us um, and what we think about that kind of idea. So uh, we're going to kind of go down the line and everyone's going to kind of present the case and then we'll have a bit of an open discussion, uh, maybe take some questions from the audience or whatever. But there are a lot of people, so we're going to kind of try to take it one at a time and uh, see how we go from there. So uh, I'll start with the person on my, my right here, Mr. Tim. Uh, do you want us do you want to let us know how you feel about the whole situation? Um, well, I mean, I've, sometimes I've been known as like the good social justice warrior or something, which is kind of an annoying label because um, sometimes I like such douchebags, I kind of want to shake that at some point, just be like another bad one, which would be nice. But yeah, I engage with anti-feminists and anti-social justice warrior people like quite often. I've been on a lot of their streams and talked to them a lot. I did a hangout with Jeff Holiday not long ago, which some people rightfully criticized, I think, because just some of the fucked up shit that the audience was saying. But um, yeah, I find that they're nice to you and they're, they can be nice to your face, but generally I find that they treat me like this strange object where I've got, like they think my views are insane and I try to explain them. And then no matter how I try to explain them, they don't really listen to me. And we just end up having this ridiculous kind of like fights that doesn't really go anywhere. And I found that, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's quite hard for me to like trust these people because it always seems like they're trying to own me over something or they're trying to like get me about something or they think like Tim's just, you know, he's learning, he's growing, he's going to become a shit lord. We just got to keep working on him. And then eventually he'll just be like posting Pepe's and like putting gas chamber memes and saying that there's only two genders, but we just got to keep working on him and then we'll get him there and then he'll be acceptable and fit within that within our nice narrow bounds. And I just find it like so irritating and it seems like no matter how much I talk to like anti-feminist and anti-social justice people, they've always got this chip on, the sh on their shoulder about like, 
who I'm friends with or the fact that I have a different point of view. Like they just don't like it. And eventually it just gets boring. They're like, Tim, do you want to have a hangout? And I'm like, oh, great. I can't wait to go on another stream where I just pointlessly argue at a wall for two hours. That sounds fun. You know, so it gets tiresome. Um, and they, always send, they send you all of these like videos and all the videos are always just them talking about how stupid you are. And you're just like, why, why would I want to watch these videos about how stupid I am? You know, like, that doesn't sound fun. I'm not a masochist, you know? So for me, it's a mixed bag. And I think the whole Lacey Green thing, um, I don't care who she's going out with, and I don't care about her trying to talk to anti-feminists and anti-social justice people, whatever. People can make their own choices, and you know, some people disagree with me engaging so much with anti-social whatevers. But um, what I do take issue with is the fact she's like dismissing so much criticism as like criticism that seems fairly reasonable because somebody said, check your privilege. She was just like, oh, you people don't get it at all. Block. And she's just like, I won't talk to you anymore. You're an extremist. And anybody who has any criticism of who she's hanging out with and the things that they have said, they get the block. They have to shut the fuck up. But then somebody with like a Kickstarter avatar, she's like, tell me about your ideas, babe. I really want to hear, you know? That's the thing I take issue with. It's just the fact that she's closed to criticism from people that were her allies or have seemed to be allies. Now she's just throwing them under the bus at every given opportunity. And, and that's the problem I have. Um, I don't care about her engagement with people, it's just the way she's doing it is kind of douchey. So, yeah, I think that's me. Cool. Yep. Good stuff. Uh, I don't know. Was that good? Oh, shit. Yeah. You did really well, Tim. We, yeah. We, we did it. Uh, hey, Bronx, well, you want to add anything yeah. and talk about what you think about the whole situation? Yeah. Uh, I hope. Am I clear? Can everybody hear me? Am I choppy? Yes. Am I clear? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. You good? You good? Yeah. We can hear you. Okay, great. Um, all right. So picking up picking up from where, from where Tim uh, left off, I, I agree with him that Lacey Green is doing uh, something. Lacey Green says she's doing one thing, and I think that she either intentionally or unintentionally is doing the other, which is to say that she's claiming to engage when she's figuratively and literally getting in bed with the other side, like literally, like I've been on a bunch of hangouts with like shit lords or whatever. And I've always come out with my, you know, I've, I've been able to be cordial, reasonable, but I've been able to generally come out with my core foundational principles intact. I didn't come out and go, you know who I hate now? Christy Winters and Steve Shives. I really hate them. Thanks for thanks for converting me, Crowd and Deep. And people know that early on, when I first actually came into YouTube, uh, one of the bigger, the first bigger YouTubers that actually brought me into their stuff was um, Crowd and T. And that was just to have me on as like a counterpoint, right? Meaning because like, there weren't any more other social justice people in his circle. So like there would be a hangout and then I would represent our positions. And I think that that is the only reason I've ever really gone into hangouts from there is so that they don't have a dais without at least one person who is not fucking straw manning our arguments. You know what I mean? At, at least if I can just get one or two really good points in, in my opinion, and not in a debate format, but in a hangout, like on a dais, I think it's good to have one of us there just just to give a little bit of balance. I think that that's useful. Uh, as far as debates, I really like the debate that Christy did, did with Sargon. That it was um, it was very well moderated. It was uh, formally very important to the community to show that we do engage. Um, but I personally don't think that I'm the right per like meaning like to each their own, right? So some people are more suited towards hangouts, some people are more suited towards debates, and some people the well is so you know when some when people come to me, the first thing they come to me with is isn't you know Steve Shives the worst? And I'm like, wait a minute, you poisoned the well so much with this guy, and then you come to me and ask why I'm sitting here and he's not. You haven't you haven't fucked with me that much. So like, like, again, I think it's fair to use like the metric of how poisoned is this well? Like, you know what I mean? If, if the person has at least approached you in a civilized manner, then I think, I think it's fair to engage with them as long as, again, as they haven't like fucked all your friends, you know what I mean? But I'll, I'll, <laughs> that's, that's my opening statement. You know, I'll, um, 
I'll just echo what what Bronx just said a little bit. Um, I do think that there's there's room for a variety of different methods and a variety of different modes of engagement. And I I have always said that even though I personally think that it's just a complete waste of time to talk to any of these people, uh, that I'm glad that there are other people on this side in this hangout even uh, who who are more willing to reach out than I am. Not because I think that it will really do any good, but just because I'm not so confident in the way I'm doing it that I think that's the only way that anybody should ever do it. Um, I, I do think that uh, the, the main reason that I feel it's a waste of time is that I don't, I don't trust any of their motives. Like I just don't, and Bronx kind of said this uh, in, in his statement just now in a way too. Like I just, I don't think any of them are interested in engaging in good faith. I, I think when they say they want a discussion or they want a debate, that's not what they actually want. The only thing that they truly seem to care about is to get people to pay attention to them. And that's that's basically it. And why am I? Why would I want to to aid them in drawing attention to themselves? Um, and the other thing is, a lot of them try to cultivate this uh, this sense that well, there's there's our side and there's the other side, but we're all kind of playing the same game. We're like opposing teams, you know. We're like we're like the Red Sox and the Yankees, but we're all kind of playing together. And I just reject that completely. Maybe some people, maybe other people, maybe some of you all see it that way. I don't see it that way. I don't see them as people I'm playing with. I don't see them as people I want to talk to. I don't see them as people I want to associate with at all. I seriously don't like them and think that they're doing bad, harmful things. And I'm not interested in engaging with them or in trying to persuade them or in having arguments with them. I, 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 I don't talk about them on my channel, except for events like these. I don't talk about them publicly at all. Um, and I, that's just, that's the only way I have ever thought to handle them. I, they, they, they attack me. They attack my friends. They attack my family. They attack anybody who disagrees with them or anybody who makes a convenient target and they profit from those attacks. So as far as I'm concerned, they can all go to hell. But the exception I would make is if somebody reaches out to you in private, as has been done with me on very rare occasions and has never been done with me with any of the big ringleaders, like none of the people who have made response videos about me or about Christy uh, or about Francesca Ramsey or Cat Black who have gotten like hundreds of thousands of views and, and basically built careers on attacking people. None, none of those guys have ever privately reached out to me, which I think is telling. But I have occasionally got private emails from people who are sort of on that side of things who have been interested in asking questions or having conversations. And if I judge that that person is reaching out in good faith, I will respond and I will try to have a conversation with them in private. But if you come out in public and you're basically just grandstanding before your audience and throwing out all these big macho challenges to debates and hangouts and stuff. And it's obvious that you don't really care about any of that, that you just care about promoting yourself and drawing attention to you, then I have no time in the day for you. And there's, there's nothing that could convince me to pay attention to you in that way. I think if people are really as serious about having debates and conversations and open discourse as they say they are, then they would be a lot more willing to reach out privately, at least reach out privately first to say, hey, just you know, person to person between me and you, would you be interested in having a conversation? Here's what I want to talk about. And the fact that most of them don't bother doing that, I think speaks for their true motives. So now I'll shut up. Peter, go for it. I I actually think a lot of a lot of similar things to that. Not entirely similar because I do think that there are methods that are more productive than other methods. I'm not a big fan of the way debates have been done on uh, in Hangouts and you uh, overall. And when I say debates, I often include what a lot of people are calling Hangouts because they will call them debates. Um, they will be like, debate me, and then it's really just basically a bunch of people yelling over each other in a hangout. It's not a moderated debate, so to speak. Um, and there's almost never a moderated debate. It's almost always uh, that, if you're going in with 
the types of people that are generally looked at here. Now, if the other side is maybe, uh, I, for instance, have very leftist views. Uh, so for me, a lot of the time, the other side might be uh, liberals, like on the instance of healthcare, it's a free market solution versus a more uh, social safety net solution. That is very easy to find somebody who's willing to go in on a debate in good faith. Uh, it, people actually believe what they believe. They're not trying to characterize each other as specific things. They're not trying to straw man. They're not trying to do things like that. Um, but when you go in with the reactionaries, so to speak, and I haven't done this because I've watched enough of them to know not to do this. They don't like me, and I know exactly how they'll treat me if I do something like that. Um, but what it seems like they're generally trying to do is to brand you, to sort of make you look like what they've said publicly to their followers that you are. And that seems to be the main motive when they, like Steve said, they almost never come, I've never had a single one of them reach out to me privately a single time. I've had people challenge me publicly, which I just totally ignore. I don't, I, I just brush it away. don't really think about it. But I, I agree with the idea that essentially when you take uh, something where there is probably going to be a heated disagreement, but you publicly challenge it, you're sort of establishing a different, uh, a different motive than actually attempting to get people's views out there. I'm not a big marketplace of ideas person. I don't really believe in the whole put out uh, two views and let the audience decide what's the truths and blah, blah. I'm not really big into that. Uh, I'm more into presenting cases, uh, specific one-off. I'm more into rhetoric than I am into debate, basically. I think that if we're really talking about people being able to make up their minds, I think having people be able to present the best case that they think rather than argue over each other, I think is a lot more useful. Yeah, so just following up on what Peter said, if you're done, yeah, you're muted, so you are. So, yeah, obviously I'm taking a bit of a minority here view here in that I'm, I'm a fan of debates, but like Peter was saying, the terminology is actually really important here. What I don't mean by debate is two people in a hangout who just hash it out. That, for me, is just a hangout. So I would say, you know, a hangout is two people in a, in a hangout, no moderation, no clear question, just back and forth. Uh, a formal debate has a moderator, a clear question, timed points for people, um, they can, you know, uh, and then there's a, a response where you get to respond to someone's opening statement and they, they can respond to your opening statement and there's a closing statement. Um, so, you know, my experience is very much, and, and also, sorry, the other thing I want to say is to echo what everybody else said. I, I don't want to impose my view of how to engage on anyone else, but here are my conditions, right? Um, I actually really found the formal debate to be a good experience and it was my first debate ever. Um, but what was important about it is, you know, I occasionally will watch hangouts uh, from people on the other side. And I remember two specific instances, one when the Milo stuff um, initially started to blow up about something he wrote about how the internet should be moderated and some people should be taken off the internet. And I'd done a video about it. And I think it was Honey... Honey Badgers did something similar and I went to watch it because it was Milo drama at the time and it was timely so I, th I tuned in and they mentioned my video and they just trashed me like on air they're just talking about how horrible I was and then I made a comment in the chat and they went oh Christy Richards in the chat you should you should join you should come and join us I'm like you just trashed me well you think I did not hear that why would I want to come and spend time with you another experience was um, Fox from the West or Fox in the West and I'm the guy who sucks up to Sargon all the time um, and, and same too, I was uh, watching some of his hangouts and it, they're trashing me, he's trashing me. And then on Twitter, he's like, oh, would you like to have a polite conversation? I'm like, bridge burned. I, you think I don't hear what you people say about me? Why do you think that I would trust to sit in a room with you and, and let you insult me? And I guess, you know, the other thing too is I'll just be upfront. You know, there was a, um, I basically trolled bearing. Um, he doesn't realize this. And I don't think the white YouTuber did either, but there was an attempt to try to get bearing and I to sit down in a hangout. I, I went along with it because I knew he wouldn't do it based on my conditions and my conditions about were very simple. The whole point was to talk about the doxing allegations, his false allegations against me, his defamation. And my condition was, if we're going to talk about it, 
we only talk to evidence because I got a lot of evidence, Patrick, that I want to present to you. I have questions for you about your music channel where you use your first and last name. I have questions about you, about your people, fans doxing you on your Facebook page. I have very a lot of things that I want to ask you. And he would not go near it. He wanted to get me in a stream on his channel so that he could bring me down to his level and call me slur sexual slurs and humiliate me for his fans. And that is why I only do formal debates because here's what we all know. Most of these guys and some of the women, they don't know anything. They make up a lot of stuff. So like when Kevin was on with War Corps, War Corps would ask Kevin a question, Kevin would respond, Kevin would make good points, and then War Corps would, War Corps would do the dance. He would do slippery slope fallacies, he would do what ifs, he would change the topic, anything to, admit, to avoid having to actually deal with Kevin's valid points. And in a formal debate, when you have to speak for 10 minutes on your topic, and then you have to defend your position in another five minute segment or another seven minute segment, and then you have to make a closing argument that's convincing to an audience, that's intellectual work. That's hard. And they won't do it. And that's why I only do formal debates. <laughs> and I'm done. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Peter. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, Chris, you're up next. All right. Well, I mean, my position is generally proceed, but with caution. You know, and I want to uh, go back to a little of what Christy was saying. Nobody has the right to treat you abusively and expect you to sit there and smile because it's just words. You can and should stand up for your own dignity as well as that of others. And I'm not saying I never insult people or get worked up in arguments, but you know, I wouldn't call people names if they said, well, you're being a jerk, I'm out of here. Like, oh, okay, you know? Um, I've had good relationships with people from the other side, but for everyone that worked out, there are 10 just crushing disappointments. It's frustrating, it's stressful, stress is not good for you. You know, so it, do it if you feel like there's a benefit for it. But first of all, do never let anybody convince you it's some sort of obligation. You know, if, if you don't feel comfortable, if it's not right for you, you're not under any obligation to do this. You know, not being, jumping every time they throw out the hook does not put you in an echo chamber and mean you're the worst person in the world. Everybody's different in what they can do, what they want to do, what their situation is. So just, I mean, I, I think that um, I give people a chance and if they burn me, they're gone to me. And sometimes every now and then they don't burn you every now and then they're okay. And then, you know, it's good. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Ashley. Well, um, I, I'm really not for engaging with these people for similar reasons, um, kind of like what Christy was saying, but also kind of what, um, Steve alluded to. It's like it's too much. It's just too many times. Like I've seen. Oh my god! I've responded to so many video. I've responded to not so many, but just enough videos where people just couldn't be bothered to get off their ass and do the tiniest bit of research. It's like, but they want to talk about these things that they don't understand, and it's like okay, you don't understand it, that's why you do research, it's like, but if you can't be bothered, then why would we have a discussion? It's just like, and I've had too many of these people just act like, just act like dicks for no reason to me, and it's like, people will, I mean, people will come and look at my, like, Twitter profile, or, or my blog, and be like, oh my god, this is so cancerous, it's just like, why would I want to debate with these people, and it's just, it's a waste of it's just a waste of my time. It's like I don't I don't want to I I don't want to give my plat give a platform to these people. It's just like my time is not best spent doing that. Like for God's sake, um, I remember on, on when I commented on one of his videos, War Corp six 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 challenged me to debate about veganism on my channel. I'm just like um, no because because what's there to debate? I have information about veganism. On my channel, on my blog, it's like, what's there to debate? 
It's like, and that's not productive use of my time. It's much better for me to research one of these issues related to, or at least tangentially related to, veganism or feminism or anti-racism or what have you, and just make an informational video or an informational post on my blog about it. It's like, why would I want to engage with someone who has a quote-unquote opposing view? It's like, that's not the best use of my time. It's like, and it, and it's... <sighs> I I I made my last video was about um my last vi my last my most recent video on my channel is about like how I've come from a past of uh bullying and it's just like I don't it's like so I've met I've met people like this many many times it's like and those were kids these are grown adults acting this way it's just like no just I don't I just it's it's not worth it so that's basically it thanks Ashley uh Rose Uh, all right, so the position that I take is largely, um, one, it really depends on who the other side is, because often I find that something like this is actually me talking to the other side, kind of. Um, it, it depends on what the issue is, of course. Like, with Peter, I am very far left as an anarchist. I am not in favor of capitalism. So sometimes this means I have to talk to a liberal about the ethics of capitalism. Um, I'm willing to engage within reason. Um, when it comes to a lot of um, anti-feminists though, um, similar to the point that Steve has made, when it comes to a lot of them, they see, no, it's fine. I actually told um, Ashley at the beginning, or before we started that, my name was perfectly fine to use. All right, so, um, but yeah. So I take the position that you largely should not engage with anti-feminists, especially if they aren't genuine. I haven't come to the conclusion of you shouldn't debate anti-feminists because um, their minds can't be changed. I've come to the conclusion that most anti-feminists who you're dealing with are not genuine about wanting to actually talk about issues and about actually wanting to hash things out. They just want a power trip. They want to say, look, I don't lock out opposing ideas. Here's a feminist. They want to do it for kind of ego points, and I really do not like to feed into their ego, e even if it means that I have to kind of sacrifice my own ego of saying I don't, uh, of saying like, hey, I don't lock out opposing views. Um, but as um, I, I did early on in my channel, engage with a lot of people outside of my um, outside of the feminist circle. Um, there are a couple who I would do it with again, mainly Bane six 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 Bane six 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 AU, who was generally pleasant to talk to. But going on, like I went on to War Corpse's channel once, and I absolutely regretted it it was an hour and a half of just sitting there having him yell out points that were not based in facts and me just being like look i'm not i, I don't even know where to start with this i i, I just want this to end I, I need to drink after this so that's my point is that i generally don't engage especially when they're not genuine and there's very few cases where I do. For the most part, I don't think it's necessary to engage with the other side. Cool. Thanks. Next up, last on the list. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, man. You're good. Okay. So uh, I'm coming more from a kind of uh, viewer, consumer perspective on... YouTube and all these debates and basically something that's really been important for me is uh, commenting but not just commenting but the, the the communities that build up underneath videos and underneath these sort of debates and arguments so that's why for me the most important is the format of a, a response video or well thought out and researched responses and things like linking to blog posts with all the either scientific evidence or you know, wrote, written out, written out viewpoints, and I, I think it's important 
in a lot of these, uh, a lot of things that started happening with these anti SJW channels targeting smaller channels and basically getting them shut down. For me, it was important to, you know, come in there in the comments and say, your video was great. You have like 100 subscribers. It was great. I looked up all the links and I liked your points. And you should make another response video because I think you had a better argument than the other person. So, you know, sometimes on on uh, on, on YouTube, on a, the, the the creators, it seems kind of forget that a lot of this stuff, a lot of their content gets debated either in the comments or other places, and yeah, it's been great to say, look, I can link you to this video, I can link you to these articles, I can link you to this information, which I got from someone who's much cleverer than me, who's done all the research. And, you know, then these people who are, who are the viewers, they look up various content and they can compare it. Like, for instance, uh, early on, like a few years back, I had no idea about trans issues at all, or, you know, intersectional feminism, so far as trans rights or the... Uh, black feminism, things like that. And, you know, I, I looked at the different YouTube videos of different uh, trans people giving their arguments and backing it up with data and saying how they felt and how the different arguments were either flawed or were actually, uh, you know, harmful to them. And that's what, what got me where I am today. I mean, without all these channels just making responses to each other and just throwing it backwards and forwards in that way, then I don't, I don't think I would have got to the information at all. So, you know, formal debates are good and engaging in a way that's, that's constructive from your perspective and with the support of, a, of your fans, of a community that's saying, thanks for that video, it really helped me and enabling people who actually have good arguments to, to respond and to get their viewpoint out there. I think that's important. So, cool. that's Thank me. you, thank you. Uh, I think Christy uh, wanted to say something real quick, so go for it, Christy. Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to say also that you know we think a lot about the actual interactions themselves, but what people probably don't think about is the fallout. So you know, I had a real spike in harassment after my debate with Sargon because um, you know he uh, at the end when there was a Q and A, and it was supposed to be a Q and A from audience members to us. And he used it as an opportunity, because he hadn't had one, to just go after me and demand I read Obama's mind as to why he used a statistic like I would know. Um, and so another reason I think that puts me off, um, or maybe puts other people off, is that you know that if you do go on these hangouts, you're basically making yourself a target for harassment from the fans of, of the anti-feminist channel that you're visiting. And so it ends up being just a generally negative experience all the way around and not a positive one. So, you know, if I do another debate, I will, I know that afterwards I'm probably going to see a spike in my harassment and rape threats and comments and everything else on my, on my channel. And that's another thing that kind of, you know, makes, I think some people wary of getting involved. And I know Chrissy also, had a great point too. So I, by the way, um, I'm going to sacrifice my spot because I know so many people want to get in on this. So I'm going to go ahead and drop out a little bit early. And, and then uh, I know some other wonderful people will be joining and giving a great discussion. So first, I think this was really interesting and I love all the perspectives and I agree that we need them all different forms of engagement. And also there's valid reasons for not engaging. And I think we need both people who make principled stances about why they don't engage and other people who do engage. So again, I'm going to check out, but you guys are awesome, and I'll watch offline. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Christine. <laughs>